Yo, what's good with y'all, man? It's your boy to be wild, and I'm back again with another reaction. We finna get right into this. Fresh out of prison, you set his girlfriend on fire. We finna get into it, man. Make sure I leave a like, sub, and new time post notifications, man. And without further ado, let's get it. Early in the morning of August 26, 2022, officers in Washington County arrested a man near a Highway 36 overpass. He was found lying in the grass, carrying a blood-stained piece of paper along with an EBT card belonging to a woman named Shana Daniels. We'll talk in a second. You're under arrest. Don't move. Who was this man? And what was he doing with the EBT card of a woman who was found stabbed and burned in her apartment just hours earlier? And who was the 43-year-old victim Shana Daniels, who firefighters found so brutally murdered in her bedroom? Oh my. Around 6.30 p.m. on August 25th, crews rushed to an apartment building on the 2200 block of South Avenue East in North St. Paul after getting reports of a fire. Thick black smoke was pouring out of apartment 8 as officers and fire crews tried to make entry, hearing someone inside cry out for help. Where's our guys at? Second floor? You need people out in the bottom? Uh, just hang tight. Okay. Rush! I say, just get officers out. I get that money, I'm a flex. I get that money, I'm a flex. I get that money. They could hear someone screaming, but the flames and smoke were too intense and dangerous for officers to go any further. Did you guys hear anybody yelling? No. Yeah, they said they heard. They said she's they up said there, they heard him yelling. I'm yelling. Here? Yeah. I don't hear anything. I they tried running up there. He was you couldn't get in? Oh, you can't see. You can't get up there. It's dead black. It, yeah. But, somebody, but somebody's still in there. They said that they they said someone's in there, but... Yeah. It's thick black. Can't you see. can't see. Go. We got somebody hitting the window. Third floor. Yeah, yeah. Someone just saw it. Someone hit the window. Dang. Bro, we live in a wicked world, man. I, when I react to these body cam footages and stuff like this brought to my attention, it's just crazy, bro. Like, I, this is where we live in is wicked. And it seemed like stuff just getting worse by the day. Like, I, I don't know. It's just like whenever I could just be scrolling on the Internet and then, especially when it comes like to Twitter or X, whatever. Scrolling there, bro, you'll see somebody getting assassinated, like, executed. Like, you seeing it, it's right in front of you. Like, people running down, people standing over them. It's like. What the hell? I mean, I get it. This shit been going on before social media, but when it's like right here in your face and you could just see that, like before you couldn't just get on the internet and just see stuff like this, where it'd be like the dark web type of shit. You can see that on. But now that junk is like frontier, like right here, man. You can see that, and it's it's crazy, man. Like you live in a wicked world, man. Up there? He's no. in the window. Anything. No, we didn't. He's in the window right there. In that no, window. No, no, we know. We know. We know. They're going up and they're going to get him. It's, but it's we, we, oh, yeah, we, we they okay. couldn't get in because yeah. you can't yeah, see. Yeah, he's in the panic mode. Oh, my God. Who's in the car? And that's the car. A lady and a woman. Heads up, there's supposed to be two people that live there and a possible dog. There might be two people There's dogs in the the rest of the building was evacuated, and by the time firefighters got the blaze under control, the woman inside apartment 8 had stopped responding. As officers eventually made entry, they found her half-burnt body in the bedroom. Initial investigation would reveal that this wasn't just a fire, but the cover-up for a brutal crime.
Multiple witnesses had seen an unidentified man in the victim's apartment window as the fire first started. So there's a male and a female. There should be a male and a female up there. Witnesses believed the victim was with her boyfriend that same day, and they were heard arguing at the apartment the night before. Shana was a breast cancer survivor who was continuing recovery from her April 2020 diagnosis, chemotherapy, and double mastectomy. The boyfriend, Melvin Bilbro Jr., then 41, had gone to Shauna Daniels' apartment 15 minutes before the officers arrived. At the time, Bilbro was a four-time convicted felon on supervised release after serving Jeez. prison time for failing to register as a predatory offender. He was released from prison. And y'all let these type motherfuckers back on the streets, bro. Why? Four time, four time felon, bro. Like, be for real, man. This man deserve all his rights stripped, bro. He should have, he should have been dying in jail, bro. Like, come on, man. In prison, like, be for prison. Real. Just five months before the fire, his past convictions in Minnesota included attempted second-degree murder of his then-girlfriend and for second-degree criminal sexual conduct involving her 12-year-old daughter in 2008 and for third-degree assault involving another girlfriend in 2009. Clearly, he has a pattern that he goes, goes at. And it sucks because he probably buttered this woman all up, bro. I love you so much, I never I hurt you. Once I get out of jail, we gonna be forever. I'm gonna marry you, we gonna have kids, we gonna start a family, dude. And then what happens? This man. We got a lot of wicked people walking this earth. And man. <sighs> These crazy things like this happen. I, I can never understand it, bro, because I'm not in the mindset of these type people, bro. So I, I can never understand it. But people that do like, like therapists and stuff like that, where they gotta like kind of know how the mind work and stuff like that, you know, in a sense, man. I, I just need to watch like how y'all break stuff down like this. Like this man clearly, clearly, multiple women he have dated, he assaulted. Try to kill, done sexual stuff to her kids. We're like, it's, it's weird, bro. It is weird. 18. Police obtained a search warrant for both Shauna and her boyfriend's apartment and found key evidence a blood stained pack of Newport cigarettes. Blood on walls. Scissors and a broken knife covered in blood. Meanwhile, in Bilbro's apartment, more evidence was found. One of the clearest pieces of evidence against Bilbro was a dog covered in soot and smelling of smoke. The dog found in his apartment belonged to Shauna, it became clear this wasn't just a tragic fire. It was the scene of a murder. The autopsy reports revealed that the cause of Shauna's death was not an accidental fire, but homicide. She had multiple sharp force injuries to her head and neck with a perforation to her left eye. Her nasal bone was fractured. Police officers spoke to a witness who called Bilbro and told him of the fire. Bilbro said that he was with Shauna when her ex-boyfriend showed up, so he left. When his apartment was searched, he was nowhere to be found. The next day, Bilbro was finally located by officers as he hid in grass near a trail and was arrested on the spot. He was found with a blood-stained piece of paper along with Shauna's EBT credit card. We'll talk in a second. You're under arrest. Don't move. You guys want us You guys go? Yeah. You want to grab him over there? Yep. My left? He did all that, bro. For an EBT card? Yep. She must have said no. She wasn't needing you in front.
The in-depth coverage you've seen so far has been made possible because of the support of our sponsors like Morgan & Morgan. We've brought you mind-boggling video here you can case get rejected and then cry. It's about the fatal fire and the death of his girlfriend hours earlier. So you want to clear a few things with my partners. Um, I'd like to keep talking with you here if that's okay. Um, so, like I mentioned before, um, I guess I'd like to talk about you being under the bridge a little bit. And how did you, how'd you end up there? I was just there, man. I seriously, you know, I got nervous as hell, but all I know was a moving on the left side of me and a moving on the right side of me. So I was just sitting in the middle, so I went on both sides. I don't know what it was, but I just wanted to move when I felt a little comfortable. Because I told you, I was smoking weed, I was really high. Okay. You're quite quite a long ways away from St. Paul, I guess. Under that bridge. I mean, the first time. It's I a pretty decent around. walk, I think. I mean, it was like a 10 minute drive for us. I usually jog. So you see you're in that whole way? No, no, no. I'm usually, when I'm working out, I jog. Okay. So I've been further than that. How long are you on the trail for? I have no idea. I don't know. I, don't, I just pace. I don't count time. I don't even count steps. What time did you leave? The apartment, your apartment. Mm -hmm. I don't even remember. Cause uh, I went right across the street. And that's why I ran into Jay and he started smoking weed. How come you didn't stay at the apartment when people were telling you that? And I called. I'm on the call. I was making phone calls. So I let him like, look, what's going on? Uh, went back upstairs. Uh, I went to the store. I can't remember the back, but I'm just in the area. You went to the store? Yeah. What store? Uh, Holiday. Holiday? Did you buy anything there? Cigarettes. Cigarettes? Okay. And where'd you go after Holiday? Right back around the area. There you know, there's a whole one-up store. Holiday, oh, they got cameras, bro. We about to figure this out right now. You mean, well, well, there you know, I had you from my house. Or, you know, yeah, I'll come right back down here, so I'm like, you know, want to go around. You, you know, everybody thought I went in the building and started <laughs> like, no. So come you weren't hanging out when the fire department and this department arrived? Right? Because everybody else was. I mean, like pretty much everybody that lives there was there. I don't know. I don't hardly to be at I'm, I'm usually a worker. <laughs> yeah, I understand that. Um, you know, I, I guess the, the kind of question that I'm struggling with is that you've got a friend, right? Probably a pretty good friend, it sounds like, that you have some sort of relationship with. And um, you realize that her apartment's on fire, and then you just leave. Well, you know, like I said, it's happened before. So I'm thinking that's about the way it was. You know, she cooked a couple pieces in the damn oven, and they just caught fire in there, so. Okay. Yeah. And you didn't think to go check on her? You didn't go check on her? So, you, oh, she just cooked some pizzas. Uh, come on, bro. Be for real. If that is that, that's your girlfriend, bro. You're going to go check no matter what. Like, you're not going to just sit there and ignore that. Her apartment. I'm guessing it's right. pizza Where or not. I'll there. I'll there for a brief. You know what I'm saying? But I don't want to. You were there for a brief. No, I was outside. When they came and banged on my door. So why'd you act surprised when we asked you or told you that there's a fire there? I was not surprised at all. Bro, you're sitting here. You caught in a lie, bro. They just... Mm. You an idiot, bro. I'm, I'm really struggling with with why you wouldn't stay. I mean, I, I think the average person, a reasonable person, would have stayed in that situation. If they're friends, they're close friends. Um, their apartment's on fire, and probably something could have happened. I want to, I want to, want to make sure that they were okay. I'm not gonna just leave, like, bro. If I can't get to you, then of course let the firefighters do their job. But I'm gonna stay there. I'm gonna stay there and make sure everything you okay. Like, why would I leave that situation? So what you saying right now? Cause you back, he he kind of backtracking through all of this shit, but. Of course, they peeping at bro. They've listening to them for them details, bro. Oh, God, they are. You know, stay around people. because you're concerned, right? right. And you want to be with your other friends and help them deal with it, and vice versa. Yeah. Okay. So I'm struggling with why you right. chose to leave. Uh, I don't want to smoke. 
I swallowed up. I let I let it go smoke and just sit back and see what happens because it's like, you know, I can't do nothing, you know, about it. I'm gonna be in the way. You know. They both like, yeah, you full of shit, bro. You full of shit. We ended up finding you <clears throat> and arresting you. Okay. And you had that piece of paper that we talked about in your pocket. All right. With, with the blood on it. Okay. Whose blood is that? That's mine. That's yours? I'm sure. Where's your cut at that that blood came from? I was right here. I told you I worked with a corrugator at work. Where? Show me where the cut is. Right here. Right here. On your knuckle? Yeah. Okay. I work with the corrugator. If you ever for me with that. There's a fair amount of blood there on that piece of paper. So when we test the DNA on it, it's going to be yours? Yeah. Okay. Alright. So I want to go back and let's just forget about that. I know you said that that uh, nobody saw you in the window. I understand that. We want to forget about that, okay? Um, that's really not super important here, to be honest with you. Um, we've got this other evidence that we already discussed, okay? And this other evidence is blood evidence. Um, and like we talked about already, blood is going to show belonging to a specific, excuse me, specific individual, and that's going to be her blood. The problem that we have is that you have her blood on clothing in your apartment with her dog that's going to have soot on it, um, and we're going to test that. And we've got this dead woman in her apartment. You see how that's a problem? Bill Bro changed his story several times, See, first saying he was just friends with Shauna, then that they had a sexual relationship. He said he was at his apartment during the fire and walked away to smoke. He claimed he last saw Shauna on August 23rd, then said it was August 25th. While still maintaining